Appreciate everyone uh, turning out. Obviously, we're uh, extremely happy uh, to finally get our out-of-conference schedule uh, set. Um, I know personally, I'd like to thank you know Dr. Gross and Herman Frazier. I don't think that um, I'd have a hard time explaining how exhausting it was to try to get the schedule in place due to uh, all the conference realignment and. Um, you know, in those conversations with coaches and administrators throughout the country, uh, it's, it's become very difficult to handle this situation. Um, we had a couple of options, and we did everything we, we could to, to try to get um, the best situation, you know, for our, for our program. And, you know, playing two FCS schools was uh, out of the question, and uh, I'm happy that uh, you know, Dr. Gross and Herman Frazier agreed, and we went to try to get the, the best team that we can play to help our program and become a better football team. Uh, so we're happy that, you know, obviously going to Missouri in November um, was really the last piece of the puzzle that we needed. And then now we're just waiting on the Big East Conference to uh, announce who that other opponent will be, and I, I do not know at this time. Um, I think the out-of-conference schedule is uh, challenging. Uh, it's exciting. I think those type of schedules make you a better football team. Uh, you have to get better quickly. Uh, you have to grow up fast. Um, reminds me a lot of when I was here. Um, when we played Nebraska one week and then the following week we had to go down and play Florida and Gainesville. So um, those are the type of games and the type of scheduling that, that I believe this program was built on when Coach Mack was here and uh, I'm excited for the challenge. The process went, we, we actually did have a game scheduled, and then uh, a couple of months ago, obviously, the Big East Conference and the realignment, you know, we expected uh, TCU to come here to the Cary Dome, knowing that uh, when we were going to play down uh, in, the, in, in MetLife Stadium, correct, politically correct, um, we were going to, you know, make sure that we can ensure to get the home games here. But uh, again, and that was the first step of what we tried to do. Uh, so when we initially went out and spoke to the, these other programs and other teams, it was for to get the home game here. And then when those, those situations became exhausted where we couldn't get that done, uh, then we took the best option that we had available, which was uh, going out and playing to Missouri in November. And again, I think, you know, for the fans who obviously, uh, you know, we think, we think of first of what we're doing because they're important, the most important part of the program for us. Um, you know, I hope that they understand truly that that's exactly how we went about this and that we didn't go into this uh, situation thinking that there was going to be conference change, conference realignment going into it. And that's why uh, you see that uh, again this year. But with us moving forward, whenever that may be, for us going into the ACC, and you have the nine games in conference, and now you're playing, you know, three games out of conference. The schedule now can be set for a long period of time, and hopefully, um, you know, with, with all college football, that this conference realignment is, has stopped. Now, with the Missouri game, uh, does it include a return game to the carry over the future? Or? Again, I think that, you know, as as of my knowledge right now, that this game we're playing, we're going out there. I, I just don't know that because of us going into the ACC and then obviously we have some games that we do want to keep on the schedule, the Penn State, Notre Dame, people that traditionally we have played before. So to my knowledge right now, I, I really can't answer that question. I do not know. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I think it's, you know, when you look back and you look at the program and, and you look at what, uh, I can only talk about it from a personal standpoint of how, you know, when I first arrived here and the teams that we had to play, you know, I feel that, you know, let's go out and, and that's, that was our attitude. Let's get the best team we can to come in here and play. And that's how we initially started it. And then, and I was excited about that. I think strategically when you look at schedules, you know, and you, and you start doing those type of things and scheduling teams, um, you know, could you uh, 
you know, could you last longer, you know, maybe, you know, can you try to schedule it up and try to match things up where, you know, your talent level's better and you look on paper and you say, here we go. Um, and is that going to make your career last a little bit longer? You know, I understand one thing, we have to win. You know, and winning is the, is, 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 a, is the most important thing. And right now, that's what our focus is on. And, um, you know, we have to win enough games to, to, to make sure that, that they don't get tired of it, you know, that they don't get tired of the cliches, you know, that people say. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever stood up here and made excuses, and, and I'm not going to start that today. So, you know, we have to win. I like the schedule, um, and, and it forces us, and it forces this program to get better and to see what the weaknesses are and what the problems are, um, you know, throughout this, throughout a season. As far as as far as uh, our our football team schedule or the scheduling for well, I think I think from a standpoint of when we look at the season, we adjust to what we look at day to day. I don't think we look ahead and say, "Oh, we have to do this or that." So you know, for us, it's a um, you know, it's a little bit of. You know, going out there and just getting the film, getting the breakdowns and starting early, which we'll start right after spring on, on our opponents. So, um, you know, uh, we've, we've played Northwestern. Obviously, Minnesota has changed. You know, Coach Fitzgerald there does an outstanding job. Uh, we played USC last year, so that's still, you know, that's, that, that's a good situation. You know, knowing, you know, what, what we're expected there. And then, obviously, Missouri would be new. Uh, but at that point, anyone would have probably have been new for us. So I think, you know, for us, we're concentrating on what we need to do. Um, you know, ending the season the way we did was obviously no one has a good feeling about that. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of players over the break when the bowl games were going on, and, and we've done a lot as far as a team, as far as, you know, increasing our, our competition, uh, increasing the way our, our uh, sense of urgency, I think, when you have that. Um, and then now we have to go and carry that out onto the field in spring practice um, as we move forward to, to better the program. Has it affect what overall for games our here? Our home attendance. Our home attendance. Well, you know, I I can't answer that question right now. I think we'll we'll see afterwards. But as far as the program is concerned, you know, it is a vital recruiting area for us. Um, it's 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 really like home. It's not here in the Carrier Dome, but as far as I can only speak of how we felt when we went to the Pinstripe Bowl. You know, I think anyone that was there at that game and at Yankee Stadium would feel like that was a home game for Syracuse, even though it was a bowl game. And those are very difficult to get. So I think that we're, we're excited about playing down there because of really the benefits of the recruiting, but also the benefits for the people that can't come to Syracuse for all the home games. You know, we have such a large, a large base of alumni in the tri-state area, you know, it gives them a chance to go. And it also gives an opportunity for our fans, you know, to take a trip down and maybe go into the city. Um, we see that quite a bit when it comes down to the, the, the Big East tournament, you know, how many of our fans go down to the Garden and how when our team plays at the Garden, it's like a home game. and. Um, I think that's the type of experience that, that our players have. So we welcome that. I think for our players, I think it'll be a great experience, uh, you know, to go in there and play in a, uh, uh, an NFL stadium. Uh, I think that's something that, you know, we're obviously working hard on using in our recruiting efforts. And I think that has helped us, especially now with the college landscape where everyone's trying to get this geographical situation of, you know, how can I go see my son play? You know, how many games can I see my son play is so important, you know, in, in recruiting for Syracuse. So for us to say that we're playing a game down there, obviously that helps us quite a bit because if you look at the roster, a lot of our players are there and it's easy access to go in and out and people make trips out of it and larger families come. So um, again, we're, th I think those are some of the things that are positive that I think people have to look at. He's, he's on the football team. 
He's in, he obviously he's enrolled in school with, with no issues at school, so, and there's no issues being part of this program. Well, we're trying to develop that, you know, and cultivate that. Uh, obviously, in the past, uh, Rochester uh, has has brought about quite a quite a number of fans, you know, to, to Syracuse games, and that's what we're trying to do. And we're trying to make sure that, you know, we're reaching out, trying to touch that fan base again, uh, in hopes that it generates a greater interest, which I believe we started last year. And again, um, we're just banking on good weather. Last year was quite cold, and it wasn't the uh, turnout that we expected. But uh, with the way the weather's been this year and we have to uh, make sure that we promote that and, and all that we talk about this great city, uh, I think that's going to help us and it is very important for us. Has there been a growth? Yeah, have you noticed anything with your relationship with Rochester in the year that you, know, you guys have had that practice? It's, I, I think those I think from my opinion people appreciate you know what we're trying to get accomplished and I think that's important. As far as it paying dividends from a uh, recruiting standpoint one or a um, fan standpoint of bringing people, uh, people are going to wake up in the morning and drive to Syracuse to come to a game. Uh, again, I think, I think that still remains to be seen, but again, uh, at least we're doing our part in what we're trying to get accomplished. We're going to be at the dome for most of the session, and I think I think uh, uh, following this up in, in a couple of days when it's appropriate, I think uh, Dr. Gross will probably make an announcement or myself on on what some of the plans are, and I think that'll answer your question. At this present time, though, I can't really. It, it's not fair for me to say it. You know, I didn't see the actual numbers, but I've talk, spoke to a lot of, obviously, uh, coaches and general managers. So, um, you know, I'm excited, you know, for our players. And I'm excited that they had an opportunity to go because, you know, that's the first step. It's tough to get invited uh, to an NFL combine. And uh, for our players to go and represent themselves the way they did, you know, more importantly, you know, obviously for them on the field, but also uh, in the one-on-one -on -one interviews, I'm excited about that. And, again, we have Pro Day uh, next week which I think most of us probably will not be here because it's during the Big East tournament. But uh, again, I'm, I'm excited for those players. There's, there's, uh, there's been a lot of positive feedback. Is it nice to have some of those guys come back in anticipation of Pro Day and have a background in the program again? It is, and, and, and it's funny because, you know, I haven't spoken to some of them. Um, it's, it's like a lot of things in life. You really, you really don't know how, what the process is. And, you know, Indy is a very, very, unless you've been through it, it's a very unique situation. And when you get in the room with the coaches and when they put you up on the board and, you know, you're getting medicals and physicals and they're asking, you know, why'd you miss this practice? How, well, how come you missed this game? What was the deal with the sprained ankle? Let's get a medical recheck. And they wake you up at four o'clock in the morning, bring you to a hospital all day. Then you have to go out there and train. And then there's Wonderlick tests, psychological profiles. I think, you know, uh, Talking to the players when they've come back, they were even though they know about it and, and you talk to them about it and you know obviously the agents that represent them prep them for it. Still, until you've gone through it, it's very difficult. And I think they they start to realize uh, every little thing you do as a player, whether it's on the field, off the field, in the training room, in the weight room, uh, is going to be scrutinized and evaluated. Mm -hmm. Well, right now we have, you know, right now in the program we have 79 total players. And, uh, and I don't have a problem answering any questions. So, and right now we'll have about uh, 70 players as of today. If we went out there, we had 70 players that can practice. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, eight players that are injured, uh, one player that's not going to participate in the spring due to suspension, uh, Terrell Hunt. And for, for us, the only position, and we've been meeting on it because we've been waiting to see how far we can go, is probably the offensive line position. You know, we're down with, with nine at that position. So we're going to think about things over the weekend, meet again on Monday uh, to see what we can do. But I'm planning on playing a spring game, you know, no matter what I have to do to get that done. Syracuse after spending time in Milford? 
Well, again, we're excited, you know, so we're looking forward to uh, him going out on the field. I have not uh, seen him throw, obviously. I'm not allowed to, to, to watch any of that, but we all know that uh, he's an outstanding athlete and, and look forward to him competing with, you know, Jonathan Kinder, Charlie Loeb, Ryan Nassib, uh, you know, going out on that field. So we'll, we'll go out there. We'll have those four quarterbacks. Final question, Dave. Hey, Doug. Hey, Dave. Um, just wondering, you know, for people who don't understand the process of this whole Missouri deal, I mean, you know, maybe people assume that, you know, Herm calls you down to the office and says, hey, buddy, here's the deal. It's Missouri. Sorry. And it's out there. And then everybody says, oh, look, look what they did to Doug Marone. Could you just stress that if it's true that you wanted to play this game, you, you want to play at BCS? Oh, you at, want to play it, there's, there is no doubt. I mean, uh, you know, if it, 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 you know, when the meeting started, what was the thought process? Let's play the best team we can play here at home. That was that was the first thing, and, and, and I'm sure Dr. Gross will tell you the same thing, and and that was a it, a refreshing part of from an administration standpoint to get their emotions of, well, hey, you know, here, here we go. So now it opened up everything for us, rather than saying wait a minute, I, I don't want to play this team, or I circle all the teams in conferences, or here we go, or we can't do this, or we can't do that. Hey, let's go out and play the best team. Let's become a better football team as fast as we possibly can. Let's see what, what, what the situation is. Let's stop, you know, fooling around and all this. What's frustrating about that situation is when you have a team that says, well, you know, we, we don't want to go and play in the Dome. You know, and, and, and you look at things, and I sit there from a coaching perspective, and, you know, and I think, I, I, I know, I can't say for a fact, but I know that, you know, um, some of the thought process for, for two of the schools were, you know, it goes back to West Virginia. You know, you're on TV on a Friday night, you play like that, that team goes ahead and beats, you know, a, a very good football team in a bowl game, and everyone's wondering, you know, what's the magic dust that we sprinkle out, you know, for that one night. So um, that was frustrating to me because, you know, I promise you, when, when I tell you the, the phone calls and, and, and the conversations and the meetings that took place to get the best team we could in here, um, you know, I, it's, it, 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 took, it took a lot of time. It, it, and, but, but again, to answer your question, absolutely. That's exactly what we tried to do. Mm -hmm. To Brent. Just to follow up on that. Sure. Um, not that you're picking one or the other, but you know, we heard Florida was involved. Florida State. Mm -hmm. A couple other schools. Yeah, maybe, you know, in lightness. Yeah, the thing, I, I totally understand. You know, for me, I don't want to sit here and say, well, this school coward out of this you know everyone had you know it's funny everyone can make up a pretty good reason why not you know well we don't want to go up there because you know we wanted the we want to play at home first and that was the one thing where the people were, were really struggling you know then the other thing is well if you want us to come up there you know what do we get out of it you know knowing that we're about to go into a conference where we're going to play nine games you know and then it becomes very limited when you look at the schedule of the games that we have in the futures that we we, we want to keep so um, you know there's a there's a uh, a negotiation process that goes i think a lot of people look at schools and says hey we can play them or play this team i think it depends from coach to coach you know and what his philosophy is and where his team is from a talent standpoint or how he looks at how to go about a conference like i said before you know there was a staff that i was on and we were we were one heck of a football team you know and we looked at our out of conference schedule it was always you know we knew our in conference schedule was 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 very very difficult you know when i was in the sec so our out of conference schedule was 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 a light schedule and why would we want to go in and play you know a, a, a tougher opponent we already have about six of them you know on the schedule so again I think it's a philosophy of, of each individual school but the philosophy of collectively between Dr. Gross myself and Herm Frazier was we're going to go out and we're going to get the best team to come in here and if not then we're going to go play the best team we can play and and um, that was that was our thought process going into it Appreciate it. Thank you.